Yeah. All right. Oh my gosh. All right, everybody. I think we're finally ready. I am so sorry this morning. And of course, it has been recording this whole time. So it's recorded the fact that we had all this trouble. Uh, but good morning, everybody. Let me go ahead and um, start the slideshow. Normally we start on time, but of course Lisa and Eric are at an event this morning and they're usually the ones who set up everything. So I appreciate uh, Adam and Paul showing up today and, and helping out. Um, but Adam, it is recording. Adam, it, it's recording. So we have that, we can give him. Um, all right, so welcome everybody. There's coffee in the back, hopefully, and maybe some donuts. <laughs> yeah. All right, there's donuts. Uh, but welcome to One Million Cups. Uh, let's see, is that going to work? No, it's not working. But if you want to check in, let me see if I could not find it. Can no. I find it? All right. Don't worry about checking in this morning. And then um, what we do is we normally hand out a code and it helps uh, One Million Cups track how many people we have. But <laughs> I will count everybody and submit that. There is. I've been trying to get through the website for the past like five weeks. Uh oh. And it's it's finally getting there. Oh. The code, but it's very slow. Okay. Start here. All right. But if you check in, so if you check in three times with us, you get a free pen. And if you check in six times, I think you get a, a free notebook. And if you get that notification, let me know and we'll find the box somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we could make it so this screen is big enough. All screen. right, so uh, the mission of One Lake Cups, we're moving forward, Adam. We're moving forward. <laughs> okay. Uh, the mission of One Lake Cups is to lower the barrier of access to resources and connections for all entrepreneurs. So, and um, yeah. And then our local mission is we try to keep things as consistent as possible. Obviously today we're not consistent, but we start on time. We, um, we don't let just anyone come up here and present. We want someone who has a business who's hopefully sold to someone besides just their mother, right? They're really having a business. If you are um, a nonprofit or if you're, uh, maybe you have an idea for a business, we're, we're welcome to talk about that and maybe let, uh, let you present if you don't have a business, but uh, definitely talk to us first and we'll, we'll chat about that. And we are the only one million cups in New Mexico. Whoop. And so right now all across the mountain time, mountain time, these other, uh, well, whoever's in mountain time is meeting right now. There we go. Key pillars. So the key pillars for one million cups is that it is a presentation, not a pitch. So person up here is not trying to sell to you. Um, it's authentic connections, not networking, meaning, you know, you, you all, we've all seen the people who just go around and hand out their business card right here in one month, here at One Million Cups. Uh, basically, we like to chat over a cup of coffee. And it's run for the community by the community, and which you'll see that uh, how that works in a moment and we want to continually be radically and intentionally inclusive so including all kinds of entrepreneurs and all kinds of businesses nope still not working I'm just gonna look at all right and our mission which i am not going to read all that to you but basically you don't have to do this alone ah. <laughs> um, and if you want to apply to present I am not positive that that is the current website to apply. Um, the beta version of the website went live. And uh, so we'll have to check that. And you could just use a simple 1mcabq.com. www.1mabc. ABC? Okay, if you don't. ABQ.com. <laughs> okay, we'll figure that out by next week. <laughs> yeah, right? We'll figure it out. And um, so our community, it's run by the community. Well, first of all, thank, thank you, Athena, and the other ladies for helping me out this morning, um, setting up. That was really helpful. Uh, but as a community, you know, we have community sponsors and uh, organizers. We all are running our own businesses. So this is not something we do full time trying to run one month cups. Um, but we have Paul Zotter over there on the computer. Thank you, Paul. 
We have Lisa Adkins and Eric Rins Whitmore who are at the NMTC event this morning. Um, Adam Sparks Brechtel and then myself, so are you doing? And then our sponsors, <laughs> sorry guys, this thing's always gonna be, we have FabPipe ABQ. So FabPipe, this is the space we're in today. And um, basically if you want to get away from your dishes and your television, this is a great place to rent to work. Uh, Jason, Jason Collin Photography, who is our official photographer. Yay. Uh, more than organized for brings the creamer. Thank you, Marianne. GOS Capital, who pays for our coffee. Thank you, GOS Capital. And uh, Noventum Custom Software, who <laughs> brings the donuts. Thank you. All right. And all right. And if you post anything on social, make sure to use that hashtag 1MCABQ. And I think we are finally ready to get started. So I believe, um, wait a minute, I gotta sit down and do this thing. I believe you're up next, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so thanks for coming today. Uh, our speaker today is JJ. He's been coming an awful lot. Uh, and has been a great part of the team or part of the, the audience. And uh, I've enjoyed talking with uh, JJ and getting to learn more about what he's up to. and. He's just really breaking a boundary with what he's doing uh, that, that hasn't been done uh, for a lot of people, especially in this area. Um, and I just really appreciate, one of the things I really take away is his family said something that I thought was really neat. Uh, his family said uh, that, he told me this. They said, you know, we didn't expect you to do something like this. So I think that really speaks to something that whatever he's into was enough to get whatever they thought would have not been a motivator to get him to do this. And uh, he's just been really polite and very informative every time I've talked to him. And uh, so I'm excited to hear more from uh, JJ, come on up. Thank you guys. Uh, as Adam said, I'm JJ. Um, I'm excited to present my business, uh, Johnson Brothers Automotive Logistics to you this morning. Um, I believe help from an expert can make the process of buying, selling, and servicing a car easy, convenient, and stress-free. All right. So I've been in the automotive industry for over 20 years now. I uh, started as a technician before moving into management. Um, when the the pandemic hit in 2020, I was running the service department at the Jaguar Land Rover dealer. Um, the pandemic disrupted the industry, making it, uh, making the automotive industry do business in a way that was more convenient for, for customers. Um, and you know, they prioritized the convenience over the face-to-face -face transactions that were typical. Um, Turns out customers prefer that, that convenient transaction. Um, a mom doesn't wanna sit with her kids in the waiting area. Uh, a doctor, an executive doesn't wanna leave the office um, to go take their car into service. Um, they'd rather be working on, on producing billable hours. But the industry wasn't, uh, wasn't easily changed. So as the, as the restrictions came down, um, they I'm not working. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Um, as the restrictions went away, they quickly went back to business as usual. All right. Um, that void that was left there made me really sad for my, for my customers, knowing that there was a better way, a more convenient way for them to do business. By the end of, or by the middle of 2021, I decided that it was time for me to look for an exit strategy from the, from the dealership. Um, and I started asking myself, what was it about the automotive industry that I, that I enjoyed so much? Um, I found that um, I love the problem solving. I love making complex things, explaining those in a, in a way that make them easily understandable. And above anything else, I love helping people. I've always, I've always been the person 
that people call when they have car problems or have questions uh, about what to do. Uh, I got one of those calls from a friend who had a dead battery on her BMW. Her husband was out of town and she didn't know what to do. She called me and we talked a little bit about where she could get a battery, how to replace it. Uh, ultimately, I asked her, do you want me to take care of this for you? And she was, she was very, very thankful for that. So the next day I spent, spent my lunch break uh, going over, replacing her battery by purchasing, the, purchasing it from the supplier rather than the dealership. I was able to save her several hundred dollars in the process and do it in a way that the dealership would never, uh, never do. Um, when, when I finished, she was so thankful. She was so grateful for the, the convenience. I told her, this is what I do. This is what I do. I help people. I take care of people and I make things convenient. So it was at that point that an idea came into my head of a roadside assistance business that had a premium valet service and consulted on repairs. I didn't really have a, a category for that. And the closest word I could come up with to describe it is an automotive service concierge. All right. So I left my job at the dealership in, in October of 2021. Um, we officially launched Johnson Brothers Automotive Logistics in January 2022. I quickly realized that the clients that, that used my services were really enthusiastic about, um, about the, the product that I offered. However, because it's a new category, it was really difficult to come across new, to, to break into new clients. Um, I helped a pair of doctors purchase a, a van uh, their, their van was totaled. They were told by the insurance company that, um, that they had seven days to purchase a new vehicle. Um, they had a week to purchase a vehicle while working 80 hour weeks, um, help them purchase a vehicle. I had a client who had a truck sitting out in front of his house for years that needed to sell, but the, the process of selling that vehicle seemed too daunting for him. I'm currently working with a client who, uh, was in an accident, has no idea how to deal with insurance companies in the process of getting your car repaired or replaced. Um, so I'd originally envisioned a really narrow view of automotive service concierge. I realized that, that there's incredible value in the marketplace for a true expert automotive concierge. My vision is that people are free to use their time and energy to do what they do best while being confident that they have an expert on their side. Um, the ordinarily issues arising in with your vehicle uh, are an incredible disruption to your, to your daily routine. I take that disruption off of your plate so that you can do what you do best. Um, 20 years of working in the dealerships taught me no one likes going to dealerships. Uh, there, there's, there's never a day where you think, today's a great day to go into the dealership, right? Uh, Not once. <laughs> what's that? Not once. Yeah. Um, the automotive industry is intentionally murky, right? It's designed that way to keep you off balance, to make you, um, to make you vulnerable. It leaves you, it does leave you open to be being taken advantage of and leaves you with a feeling of distrust. Uh, I take the mystery out of the process and generate trust while doing it. So while this isn't a sales pitch, I did want to bring up just some of the, some of the services that I offer and the pricing as uh, the, this has been one of the struggles that I have is under, uh, I don't want to undervalue myself, but I also want to, um, I want to provide great service. I also have an annual membership model uh, for one or two vehicles within a family, All right? So what are, what are the biggest challenges that I've faced 
in this. Um, the first one is people are conditioned to do business the way the industry has done business forever. They don't know there's a better way. They only know that doing business with a, with a dealership is a pain in the butt. Um, I need to develop awareness that there is a better way. There is a better option. And I need people to remember that, they're, that that option exists when they're making decisions about their car. Um, as Adam said, uh, I am a first time entrepreneur and um, you know, it's, it's a struggle being a one man, a one man band. <laughs> um, the pricing, um, you know, getting the, making sure that I, that I'm not underselling myself, that I'm properly valuing the, the elite customer experience that I provide to my customers. Finally, I don't know what I don't know, um, which is why I'm here with you guys today. I'm looking forward to your questions and um, learning more about uh, how, how you think of my business. Cool. Um, <laughs> Again, I'm JJ Johnson. I'm an automotive expert. I make the process of buying, selling, and servicing a vehicle easy, convenient, and stress-free. I'm reimagining how easy car ownership can be, and I want to welcome you to my dream. So uh, I just realized as you're talking, one of the reasons I was running late today is because I was working on a report for an incident where someone hit the car I was driving. Okay. And so it's like, this is all this leveling on there. So if anyone has any questions for JJ, come on up here. So he'll stand right in this general area. You can stand over here. And we don't have the visual up there, but basically if you stand kind of in this space and uh, you kind of look at the man and you can have one foot this way. So it looks like you kind of care about the audience. That's a good stance to have. Uh, <laughs> And then what happens is you just have a conversation here, or if you just want to like, you know, throw your question and run, you could do that too. Um, but uh, then we'll also be uh, sponsoring some questions online through the Zoom. And uh, I guess Paul and Sonia will figure out who's calling that person up and telling between the folks. So, Mr. Campbell. Oh, also when you come up, make sure you introduce yourself and your company so people have context. And so JJ knows who he's talking to. Thanks. Good morning. Um, good morning. I'm Campbell. JJ. Uh, own your daily studios. I just had a question about if if you go back to your pricing page, if we could just have that up or do you have the is that an option? You. Oh, what? This pricing page. <laughs> I'm Ooh, sorry. Okay, hey, hold on one second. Um, Let me go well, back. One of the main points though was the um, so when you take a car to get service, where right. do you take them? Like, do you have a shop? Do you take them to the dealership and you deal with all that? Or is it so, different options? For so I have different, I have different options. If you okay. have a, if you have a preferred place that you, that you deal with, okay. um, I'm obviously not going to say this is a, um, you know, don't trust that person. Sure. Right. Um, if you don't have, if you don't have someone that you typically deal with, then we can talk about options of that, whether you know, your, your specific uh, circumstance, whether that's, um, you know, a, a local aftermarket shop, whether it's a dealership or how that, how that works. And okay. as far as dealing with the process, yeah, I take the, I take the vehicle in, deal with, deal with the entire process and then, and then return it. It's done. Okay, perfect. And then the other one was the, the purchase assistance. Is that, to, does that scale? Cause what I picture is people like off of Craigslist or something that use car market that just want someone to come and have them to help check out a vehicle. Or are you talking about the whole buying process? I, I do I do the research. Okay. Um, so we we make sure that we're landing on uh, the right type of car, the right uh, mileage options, those kinds of things, and then uh, I do the research, find the car, uh, whether it's you know, whether it's from a from a a lot, uh, you know, another state, Craigslist. However, sure. There's a whole lot of ways to buy a car, sure. which is why. It's often daunting. Gotcha. But A to B, it's the whole yep. scope. Of the whole scope. I just want a car. Exactly. This is what I need. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Thanks so much. Yep. Appreciate it. Oh, all right.
We know each other. I'm uh, Paul, founder and chief scientific officer of Equacy. We develop and sell genetic tests for horses. So since you have so much experience in the automotive industry, yes, I wanted to drill down into the opacity, to the nuts and bolts level. Okay. So um, I do oil changes and routine maintenance. This is a regular place, not a dealership. Sure. And you'll run into a problem where they say this is dealer serviceable only. Right. And sometimes it's trivial. I, I have tail light out. And they're like, oh, it's not the light. It's the taillight assembly. Only the dealer can touch that. So can you talk about how they do that? Right. And, so, I mean, I know I can see why. But yeah, so um, obviously the the dealership is, you know, they're, they're designing the, the system in their favor. Right. Right. Um, so there are there are some things that are um, that are mo control modules within within the vehicle that will control a specific component where you'll have you know, the, the component is is not working, but it's not working because the control module, the shot. control module, um, the software in that is proprietary, right. and so uh, so they they want to make sure that you have to bring it. Bring so it. over the years, the dealership has accumulated the power to repair more and more things. Correct. Using the system. Yeah, and they um, they legally have to make those. Uh, that some of that software available, uh, they just make it so expensive that uh, other repair shops. They tell you it, it doesn't make the deal. doesn't make sense for them to make the investment. Okay, thanks. They're not my favorite people before. I really don't <laughs> like them now. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, JJ. Hi, Miriam Ortiz, Pino, more than organized. Um, I see like a hundred different ways you can make money with this in a very easy way. <laughs> I like um, that. <laughs> But I'm wondering if you've thought about niching and um, who your target market is and, and or it doesn't have to be limited to just one, but is there an order of people you're approaching as you build? So I feel like the people who most often uh, gravitate um, to, the, to the service are, um, are middle-aged women who have mm -hmm. lots of experience of feeling taken advantage I'm of. I'm very glad you figured that out. Yeah. That's where I was going. With. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's um, you know, ironically, uh, I had a I had a vehicle that I just we just needed to get dropped off at a at mm -hmm. a dealership. Uh, there was a um, there was nothing but dropping it off, and uh, my wife and I had two separate things that we were working on. I said, "This one's really easy. Do you want to drop it off at just mm -hmm. drop it off?" And she said, "No, because you get better treatment." when you bring your car your mm -hmm. car in than I do. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and you know it's it's funny that I'm you know in an industry that has identified that but uh missed that in talking yeah. with my own wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's some possibilities there. Um just want to make sure you were yeah thinking in that direction. Yeah I um I've had lots of clients over the year that that uh, over the years that have gravitated to me because because I do treat treat people with dignity um, and and I'm honest, so that's a plus. <laughs> <laughs> we know each other. Hi, JJ. I'm Franklin Wilson. I'm a farmer and I operate the Foundation for Sustainable Living. Um, a few observations. Uh, recent trip to the dealership. Uh, there were items. It's real convenient. Right on my way. Mm -hmm. to and from work the items they would take on the oil change for 59 dollars that's a deal the change in the cabin air filter that's something that they pretty easy yeah but then they threw me a curve on the brakes they said you've got these uh, uh you need front brakes only the rotors the pads look good so that threw me a curve mm -hmm. i said shoot me a price 469 dollars i said no the bills Okay. Not. So when you take a customer client's mm -hmm. car to the dealership, how do you how do you uh, winnow out or prevent them from going over the top on? Yeah. That so that's that's a great question because that's that's something that that most people have experienced when they when they take their vehicle in. Ups. As you get you get the list of upsells and you don't know what's real and what uh, what isn't. Um, so. I've obviously been uh, I've been in the industry. I, I have an idea 
just looking at a list of what um, you know if there's if there's a particularly zealous uh, technician who just has the package that they sell um, on every car. Uh, I see through that. Um, as far as the the um, how I present that to my clients, I'll go over I'll go over that list and say you know these are these are the things that they recommended. Um, this is, um, you know, based on your, how you drive the car, what your needs are, um, you know, are you keeping the car forever or is it a lease that determines some of how, how well you repair a car, right? Um, and we'll, we'll just have a conversation about what, what's needed, um, what is, what's fluff and, um, and then time frame. On those things, uh, I make sure I make sure to ask all the all the right questions uh, to the dealership, and so that I can give the best information I can, the best advice I can to my clients. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. So in, in my case, I picked up the car, took it to my nephew, he ordered the parts, right, and then to tie into that proprietary, we changed the front brakes out real easily, and then when we got to the back brakes. There's a uh, uh, built in the system, a lockup. The electronic yeah. lock. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there, there are some of those things um, depending, on the, depending on the scan tool that, that you have. Some scan tools will, will allow you to, um, to release that lock right. um, so that you can do them yourself. Right. Some of those, um, you, yeah. depending on the circumstance you made. He knew where to get it. But right. There's a place where. The so you'll advocate for your client with the dealer, but if you have to, you'll pick up the vehicle. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, take it somewhere else. I don't, um, just because I have relationships with the shop doesn't mean that, that you have to spend your money there. Uh, okay. we'll, we'll, find, we'll find the right solution All right. for you. Uh, one attraction of the dealer in the past was you'd get a loaner car. Sure. Because I, I bought from this dealer. They give you, they, of course, they want to sell you that loaner car. Right. Uh, do you have a tie-in to a rental car rental? How so do I don't. Have, I don't have a tie-in with the rental. Um, I do. Uh, and I do obviously work with the dealers. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to drop a drop a client's car off, pick a loaner up, and drop it drop it off her back at her her home. So. Uh, and then, right, you only get one question. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> one, one, can I get one suggestion? You can you can talk to him afterwards. There's still because um, right. we got a line. Yeah, that's and, a Sorry. Uh, it's okay. And Phil, if you want to go ahead and unmute and uh, ask your question. Thank you. Hi, JJ. Um, so um, <clears throat> you have so many, and um, one could say too many options that you could offer. And you said that your challenge was how do you get that out? Right. And so um, I think that's something you really need to look at. And how do you look at that? And how do you try and um, define what are you going to give priority to within the options that you're giving out? Right. Um, so how long have you been doing this business? So um, I started the business January of this year. All right. So how many? So so I think the the way you've got you you've got so many options. Um, I think you were to concentrate on what is the ones that are coming through the, the most at the moment, and what are you able to charge for that, and what are you able to make money on? All right, and then look at the other options you've got and you you need to look at what you're going to be charging for those and how you how much you're going to be making money on those ones because you have an expense as well right yeah um and then uh, and then i think you need to talk to to more customers i mean uh, how, how do you promote your business all right and and you can just go out there and I don't know which how which ways you're doing it, but the best way to promote your business Actually. is to make sure you're targeting the right customers. So you should take a uh, um, 
each of the customers that are currently with you time afterwards to talk to them about your other options. And then you should do some random calls to people and saying, this is the service I office, which of these would appeal to you most? Oh, right. not. Because I think you need to, you need, you're, you're going to be ending up trying to do too much and not getting an awful lot. So pick it, try and define what's your main business and, and what's most profitable. And then what are your add-on businesses that you've got? Um, you've got a huge amount of experience and, and I can see you crashing because you're trying to offer too much and not keeping control of it all. Yeah, I've, uh, I've, definitely, I've definitely felt that. Um, I'm currently currently working with a, a mentor through SCORE that's helping me to, to track and define those things and to, um, to, to really drill down into what, what are the things that are most profitable for me, what are the things that I want to do, and um, are, there, are there options that, um, that don't necessarily need to be uh, focused on. Yeah, so maybe you can just let go of those. Right. Um, the, the, I would imagine helping somebody buy, sell a car is a huge amount of effort. Right. You get out of that. Right. Versus on the time, right? Taking yes. the little time versus the time to just do a, a, a drop off for a service, a pickup with a courtesy car. Or right. You've got to figure this out. Otherwise, you're going to be going down the wrong roads. Thanks for that feedback. Hmm. All right, Jason. <laughs> Hi, Jason from Jason College Photography, professional photographer for Michael Kelly. I think the idea is fantastic, and I've often thought myself for many different kinds of industries like this kind of concierge service should exist. Like, if you want the best TV and stuff, you don't have the time. So, I think it's a great idea. And your pricing was kind of right, but I thought, what would I want to do this for? So, sure. I think your pricing is spot on. Um, when I get the email this morning from one of the cups saying the lots of automotive logistics i thought huh that's kind of unusual for a garage you know, for a port or i thought maybe deeper maybe it's a vehicle transport right so there seems like maybe an idea of immediate branding or something that in your challenge of how do you promote this how do you get this out there i'm thinking like what helps me think immediately this person might be a concierge service this might be something different than a garage or a automotive right. transport system right but uh, so I, I initially branded as concierge okay. um, and, and I, got, uh, I got a lot of, a lot of pushback from people saying, what is that? Right. Um, not that automotive logistics okay. sure. uh, is, is uh, you know, more, more clear, mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, that was the, um, that, that's part of the part of the challenge yeah gonna keep things to one question i'd be happy to talk to you later because i think our businesses are similar in one person and how a few tricks i did in the past couple of years got help marketing okay i'd love to talk but to yeah, you great idea. thank you hey, dr. Norm. hey i'm dr norm with dr norm's connections and my business is dementia prevention so i met jason jj a few months ago and uh, he told me about the concierge business and my son has a I tried to hard to sell BM Beamer that he wanted to get rid of. So I told him to contact JJ. JJ went in there, did some analysis, went to car maps or whatever. And then uh, he was able to sell the car for twice, almost twice what CarMax offered. So he saved my son the time because he's real busy, he's managing one of the customers. And he didn't have time to go out and do all this stuff. So he went in there, sold the car, and within a day or two, he found just exactly what my son was looking for. He said, I want this and this and this and this on a truck. He found it like that in a really good price. Not only did he help with the high-end items like that, but the other day I just happened to run into him at one of the meetings we were at, and I said, hey, look, I think I got an alternator going out. Can you help me out with that? Well, you can get this little $10 item you can stick in your cigarette lighter, and you can check the voltage that way you don't have to go out and buy an alternator or guess at it or go to the shop and do all this stuff. So he's multi-buried in his experience with the uh, so one thing I have to say, before he leaves, you need to take a video of him with your phone, of him saying all these things and put it on your website and any okay. social media, because that's an awesome. 
<laughs> that's what I was going to suggest. Speaking. Get some okay. testimonials. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Good Hi. Morning. Good morning. Athena Christodoulou, president of CISO Power and candidate for representative house district 31 right. for me if you're in the district uh, in november my question concern uh comment is about three months ago my car wouldn't start okay i have a tesla oh wow okay and there is no service station in new mexico well no. i take that back there's, there's one, one on the zombie yeah. up, up in Nambe up yep. that i would have to pay to get it towed to. Right. However, Tesla has it set up where they have an app and they have yeah. a mobile tech. I got it all resolved, but I have two electric cars and I have not seen the inside of a shop in seven years. Oh, wow. I've not been to a dealership in seven years. Okay. Have you brought that up into your business model to can be aware that electric cars will not need to go into the shop very much? Yeah, so um, I mean that is one of the benefits of, of having an electric car. Uh, the maintenance is is significantly lower. Um, I'm not sure what uh, there's there's a lot of questions within the automotive industry what that ultimately is going to look like um, on the service side of things. Um, I don't know that there's that there's a strong consensus in that regard. Um, as far as as far as electric uh, issues that do arise with them, um, you know, there there are there are some options locally of of technicians that have you know have experience with um, you know, with Tesla that um, you know are working with a different brand. So I have some of those relationships where um, you know. It, it, if it's possible not to have to tow your car uh, up there, that uh, that is something that we would try to avoid. But I'm not I'm not sure exactly the what that's going to look like in the next in the next few years um, as electric cars get more probably prevalent. Okay, and, and and I might maybe throw out an idea that we're not going to be able to all have new electric cars right that maybe there's going to be a conversion of gas to electric that there happens may there may and be. that might be something to be aware of and there was something else oh no if i remember <laughs> it I, oh a lot of people don't know how to buy a car yeah and they would need some hand holding and yeah and that's that's um again I'm, that's one of the things that i love doing is taking taking the, the, the mystery out of, out of that and making it, um, you know, take the- But electric cars. Right, yeah, especially. yeah. All right, thank you, good thank luck. Woohoo. Well, thank you. Um, and uh, so there's two last questions we always have, which is the first one is red or green? Red. Uh, my wife is deathly allergic <laughs> to green chili. Oh, um, and okay. the, the, the oils stay active for a really long time. So if I'm going to kiss my wife, I can't have green chili. So wow, I'm, I'm an emphatic red chili person. Red for love. <laughs> wow. There's also a couple of fans of that idea. Um, so not the latter part, but the red. Yeah, red. Uh, so and then also, is what can this community do to help you? Um, I, I really appreciate the, uh, the questions that you have. Um, if, um, you know, if, you, if you have ideas of how I can, um, how I can break in into the market or um, <laughs> uh, but um, I, I would just appreciate any, um, any advice or experience that y'all have. All right, thank you, JJ. Thank you. Great. Good presenter. So we could, uh, we've got some new folks out in the audience. Yeah. yeah. So does anyone uh, like to come up? And if you don't like to, come up anyway, because it's a good thing to do as entrepreneurs in the business world. So if you're new, come on up and introduce yourself. Tell me your uh, name and kind of what you're about. Uh, you don't have to have a business you're in right now. Just kind of tell us where you're at in your professional and environmental coming on up. 
So hello everybody. Uh, my name is Michelle Alexander Brown, but I go by Michelle, and I'm the new office coordinator for Noventum. I'm currently being trained, uh, so I'm currently shadowing uh, Samantha, who I've taken the position from for the future. But in so many words, I'm going to be bringing the donuts from now on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, everyone? Uh, my name's Kei Koa. This is my I'm Oscar. partner right here. His name's Oscar. So we, uh, we own a video production company, and it's called a Legacy Family Documentary. So we're reinventing how um, pretty much stories are passed on from generation to generation. So we make proprietary documentaries for family members to pass on their stories for all their loved ones, or even just at family gatherings, be able to watch that documentary with interviews and everything that goes into it. So wow. just reimagining how, uh, how stories are passed on. Have you applied to present here yet? Not yet. Not, Not yet. yet. Okay, we'll we talk to you about that. Slide, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. That's what we do. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ophelia. I'm currently an acting slash production intern at Catharsis Media. So, you know, know anyone that wants to come in, get their actress or actor on, you know where to find us. So, right. yeah. Cool. <laughs> Where's my cue? <laughs> All right, guys, Eric's not here. Lisa's not here. You know how it was when you're in middle school and they had a substitute teacher? That's what we're doing now. Okay, <laughs> so Eric can't tell you about events, but I can. And the only event that's on my mind is at mm -hmm. noon today. It's Banned Books Week. Uh, if you're not aware of Banned Books Week, if you're looking for a good book to read, go to the Banned Books list. And you can find that at www.bandbooksweek.org. I will tell you it's every librarian's favorite week. I've done three performances in libraries uh, yesterday, and we're doing one today, and Sonia is going to join us. So we'll be at the Lomas Tramway Library. Uh, well, okay, it's not me, it's Guy Montag uh, reading Fahrenheit 451. And Sonia will be reading any damn thing she wants to read because it's Band Book Week and there's a pretty good chance it's a band book. So what are you going to read, Sonia? Uh, I haven't decided yet. Okay, well, you got plenty of time before noon today. Yes. We're almost uh, over two hours yes. besides getting over there. Yep. So uh, please, come if you're free at noon, get to the Lomas and Tramway Library. Do I have to give you directions? Probably not. Um, <laughs> so get there, watch us read from these band books and uh, help us support intellectual freedom. Um, no one should stand between you and your librarian. No one should stand between you and your doctor. Intellectual freedom, body autonomy, insist on it. See you at noon. Yay! I'm on talk has your, your wedding ring. Anyway, um, so another one too that we've actually talked about here is this next weekend, right? The 20 something or other? Or did it already happen? Imagine ABQ? Yeah. It's Saturday. It's, it's coming this Saturday. Saturday. And I tried to look it up online. It wasn't easy because it brings up other stuff. So look up, you have to look it up uh, and then put the date in, which is this next Saturday, whatever that is, something 24th. with the 20, 24th. Okay. So look up that and then the date, and then it'll bring up like KOB or something. But otherwise, you won't be able to see access. And then there's different places around town that will pick up the trash. It's a cleanup day is what it is. And that's what the intention is this year. And they plan to make it bigger and better but this is the initial year. So if anyone's interested in doing that, jump out and clean up. Does the bar have an event? I do. Sonia. Sure. Sonia, I have a question for you. So okay, hold on. In, in October, so we got a little <laughs> bit of time, but October 20th, put it on your calendar. It's a Thursday. I'll be here from 1130 to one doing a workshop. So it's not a lecture, it's hands-on. It's a workshop called Authentic Communication to Build Your Business. So we'd love for you to come, join us, participate, learn some skills, sets, and some muscle memory about building that. What's that? Please bring the cookie. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to know if I'll bring my cookies. Um, if you insist, if you'll be here, I will bring cookies. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is a brown bag lunch. Bring, bring your lunch. What's that? Credentials. What are my credentials? I teach sales at UNM. In fact, I'm taking um, 
a group of students, I'm coaching them. We're going to the International Collegiate Sales Competition in November. And so I've got to get them ready to do these mock role plays, which has just been a great deal of fun. We're pretending that we work for a, a finance company and we're gonna be trying to sell to a yacht dealership. So totally out of anything in New Mexico, but it's what we're doing and I'm just excited. So anyway, come on the 20th of October. I would love to have you in the room so that we can all play together. Thanks. Cool. And one last thing, Phil has a question for me. Go ahead and ask the question. Yeah, Sonia, I was looking at the band books list after Paul mentioned it uh, last week or the week before. And I, I'm just, I'm flummoxed. Why is All Quiet on the Western Front a banned book? <laughs> You're asking me? I don't know. Some people get some weird ideas about books, and I don't know why uh, All Quiet on the Western Front is a banned book. <laughs> I mean, that book has been out for decades and decades. Uh, huh. and I just don't understand right. on the on the banned book list. Yeah. So, All right. so there are many reasons given for banning books. And I think having heard from the librarians and the chair of the Intellectual Freedom Committee of the New Mexico Library Association, uh, those reasons seem to me to be fake. So uh, most of the challenged books this year or from last year, uh, nine out of the 10 are young adult books. And the nominal reason is always this is LGBTQ grooming, or there's a depiction of sexuality, and everyone knows teenagers don't know about sexuality until they read about it in a banned book. So, you know, <laughs> then they will come at it and say, well, the language here, the sexuality, we're just trying to protect children. Now, for older books like Fahrenheit 451, why is that on there? Anything that's a serious challenge to authority, catch 22. Um, Fahrenheit 451. I wouldn't have put All Quiet on the Western Front into that bin, but my suspicion is there might be a pacifist element or an anti-war element. Yeah, there's an yeah. anti-war element to the book, like for Catch-22, and those books end up banned, and they say, well, there's a dirty word on page 249, right? And, and that's why. But, but the real reason is that they are challenges to existing authority. There you go. I got a question. Oh, I agree. <laughs> Thank, I you. What you do. Thank you. Thank you. I'm wondering if you have any people protesting outside that have picket signs and all that stuff. Yeah. Protesting cool. our events? Or is that happening now? No, no. I mean, there are there are many, many challenges that have gone on. I'll take the worst. Within the past month, uh, a group of people in Idaho uh, decided they didn't like the possibility of 400 naughty books in the library that they hadn't read. Mm -hmm. So they showed up at the library board meeting with guns. Uh, Idaho Jeez. is an open carry state. That's legal. As long as you don't point the gun at someone and say you're going to shoot them, it's legal to walk around with a gun strapped to you. So they were angry and disruptive, and almost nobody goes to a library board meeting. Uh, the consequence of that is the librarian quit because there were armed people standing outside her house. The library lost its insurance because they